Whether it's blown air ride suspension, expensive cooling system repairs, or cars with quick connects to open the hood on a whim because the mechanics have been up and down in that hood five times alone this month. Driving your brand new luxury car under warranty is an amazing experience, but every single mile you put on drops the value of it over a cliff. And on top of that, once you exceed the warranty period, all gloves are off for repairs, and you could be faced with a third mortgage to pay for all of those problems. And so let's dive bomb right into the top 10 luxury vehicles you're gonna wanna dump way before warranty's gone. Let's get into it now. Life's too short to drive boring cars. First vehicle on our list is what we're having here is a Land Rover and it's a Range Rover product and it says it's a Velar. But if you read that backwards, it says R-A-L-E, rail? Yeah, you're pretty much getting railed if you own these outside of warranty because of the cost of admission, maintenance and service costs. But there are a lot of problems with these. That's why they're wonderful when they're brand new in warranty, but outside of warranty, you definitely don't want to own them. Other than overpriced tires that are going to cost you three grand to replace, brakes are going to cost you 2,500 to replace. Of course, these mirrors crack and pop and sometimes they seize up with ice. Here, ice. You get water in there in the wintertime, melt thaw, and of course, then that freezes up and you can't even get inside your car. Of course, up here, you have lots of glass that has been known to come off its rails. Of course, down here, you have lots of great detail. Fakeness right there. Definitely, people are going to call you out and say, hey, that's not a real exhaust tip. That's a fake. And unfortunately, it is an interesting looking vehicle, but all the technology buried inside keeps you dancing and waiting at the dealership, collecting on all that great coffee and beverages because there's always failures. The infotainment system glitches, gremlins, electric problems left, right, and center. There's also some engine issues with some of these. And while the transmission itself isn't bad, fundamentally there have been electronic problems where it locks up and you can't get it in gear, out of gear, and you basically need to tow this unit home. And because it's a Range Rover, it's associated with high expenses all the way around. So once you own this vehicle outside of warranty, anything comes up. Coolant leaks, oil leaks, you're going to spend a lot of time in the shop and thousands of dollars on any given, even relatively minor failure. A problem that you'll find on a Honda or a Toyota might in fact only cost you $300 on a vehicle like this. The same component can easily cost you thousands. Another one that's definitely going to want to dump after warranty is one of the premium versions of any BMW model, 5 Series, 7 Series. X series, the X5, 6, or 7 that carry the big V8, the twin turbo V8 engines. And of course, we're looking at here one of the beautiful vehicles. They're beautiful when they're drive great and brand new and they're under warranty. And the M5 is spectacular. But if you're just buying one of the M550 i's or the 550 series of the BMW 5 right here, the great lights and laser cut rims, all kinds of little details. But none of that detail matter when stuff starts falling off the rails. Bring my wallet or Bavarian money waster. They don't get those names for nothing. And of course, even though you get the beautiful LED lights, this is a 530. So this one actually carries the turbo four cylinder, which is actually relatively reliable. What I'm getting at is the 550 version of this is one you definitely want to stay away from. You can buy them new, but if you're a leaser, absolutely. If you're a person that likes to take your car on for two years, dump it. Perfect because it's fun. However, this is the kind of car you definitely don't want to keep after warranty. Once you've got the V8 twin turbo in there, it's going to cost you huge money. There is excessive oil consumption. Earlier generations were much worse, but the N63 is what they call that under the hood is a real problematic so-and-so. Because many of those V8 engines in the BMW lineup tend to consume oil at a much more accelerated rate than a lot of their other drivetrains. Of course, you can expect to anticipate premature battery draw. That's going to cost you much more money. The batteries are heavy duty. You've got to get them coated and it's going to cost you out of the wallet. Of course, you also have that twin turbo V8, two turbos in that hot V, and that usually means plastics, wiring harnesses all start to melt and take a toll. Now, later versions have better shielding, but it still leads to premature valve guide wear and excessive oil consumption out the poop chute. Now, these vehicles are great, they're fun, and they're frivolous. With all of the issues that you would anticipate in the high expenses, is one of the worst and most unstable economic decisions you could make in your lifetime. The next one, well, this Lexus here, the RX 350 is a keeper. This Lexus IS350 is also a keeper. They both carry the infamously reliable outgoing three and a half liter V6 that makes give or take 300 ponies and is one of the tried and true staples of the Toyota and Lexus brand that has given them the ultimate in reliability. But things have changed and bear with me because there is a model I would suggest dumping before the warranty period is up. And it's this vehicle right here. It's absolutely gorgeous. 
and I was waiting, like many customers, anticipating what the next GX series of vehicle would look like. And here we have, we have beautiful trim right there, look beefy, almost Hummer style, heavy duty mirrors, course up there you got a beautiful roof rack and I love the lines as they run up the side here beautiful I love the light bar here this is Lexus script is absolutely beautiful I love that new design and this is the GX 550 so bear with me on this while it's a beautiful vehicle and in some cases many customers will be very very happy the unfortunate reality is this carries that brand new fully newly developed three and a half or 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 that has now been showing a lot of problems. That same engine been in the Tundra and there's lots of people talking now about the, the main crankshaft bearings in the engine. On either end, you've got these bearings. There's been shuffling and potentially catastrophic failures of those bearings, allegedly. Now there's been customers in the Tundra, again, I repeat, same engine, that have had numerous rebuilds, numerous engine replacements, and still not confident that they've actually, in fact, got themselves a reliable Lexus. Now again, anytime you go and change, overhaul a platform and redesign from ground up, you're going to take a risk on reliability. And I truly believe this is one of those risky units. Now, it's a beautiful vehicle, and of course, you can also find these engines in the LX series, the LX600, as well on top of that, the GX and some of the Toyota products. But here's an example of a brand new LX600 that carries that same engine. And look, do not drive. This is a brand new vehicle and likely has the same issue. Probably has a lower end of the engine knock and is now in a position where it likely needs major engine work. And as a result, the GX 550 with that 3.4 liter in the latest and greatest is one of those I would not own outside of warranty. And here's another one I probably wouldn't trust outside of warranty just because of its sheer complexity and the fact that there have been enough problems already. Now we're dealing with an AMG, of course, is their hot rod version. It's a Mercedes, a three-pointed star, it's a GLE 63S. But more specifically, in some of these, there's already a recall of about 105,000 units of the 450 that where they're saying the transmission doesn't necessarily downshift as you're slowing and then it sputters and the vehicle stalls, potentially causing a risk of collision. Nobody needs that, nobody wants that. But there's also been other issues, whistling noises, odd sounds, turbo problems. And of course, we know there's all kinds of module issues with these. Electronics has not been totally trouble free. Brake noises, lots of complaints on that. A central locking system, we also have a Mercedes C-Class, and a lot of it is very similar in the proximity sensors and the key fobs, and it doesn't always work as well as it realistically should. You've got a heads-up display, so much technology wrapped up here, transmission issues, electric issues, and as well, I've already heard, there's been a lot of people complain about the seat bolsters in a lot of these vehicles starting to pull back on themselves, and even the foam punching through. Lots of cases where the items, the equipment, the cosmetics of this vehicle is just not holding up. So it's not the kind of vehicle you want to keep long-term. Too many expensive, imminent failures waiting to happen, and the overall quality control just doesn't seem to be up to where it should be to expect this vehicle to last well outside of warranty. This one likely you don't want to have beyond the warranty period. And here's the next dumpster fire on wheels. We have this Infinity. This is basically like Mr. Dress Up. He opens the tickle trunk and reaches down in that tickle trunk and what does he pull out of there? He pulls out another problem with the Infinity QX50. That's right, these vehicles are chocked full of problems, but the worst part is in 2019, Infinity and Nissan decided we're gonna try something different and unique in that engine, and we're gonna call it VCM, variable compression motor. Yes, that's right, instead of having a good old-fashioned connecting rod that connects your crankshaft to your piston, no, they've gotta do something more interesting, not so mundane, that actually works. So instead, they use a set of solenoids and multiple joints within that section to create variable compression. But who wants that level of complexity outside of warranty? Not this cowboy. We also can't forget about issues with brakes. We also heard about fuel problems, exploding sunroof on some of these issues, warped gas tanks, and as well a whole host of electronic gremlins to choke a horse. These vehicles are literally beautiful when they're new and they're a little bit unique, but unfortunately Infinity tried to swing for the fences even with some great detail like that as well as some nice sleek lines and it's attractive vehicle, but unfortunately the technology is just a little too much for the mainstream population to want to risk their hard-earned dollars.
colors. Fortunately, the next one here is another three-pointed star special. And while it's a beautiful piece, the unfortunate reality is this vehicle's been sitting here a long amount of time. People aren't buying them new, and they're certainly not buying them used, which drives the value down absolutely intensely. Now, this vehicle, it's absolutely a beautiful vehicle. It's quite loaded up with technology, but sadly, this is not a vehicle that I personally would want to own outside of warranty just because it's they're breaking new ground. There's all kinds of technology that's untested largely, and there's been way too many people with complaints already that have owned these for a period of time. For example, people have mentioned charging stations not necessarily available. The phone sort of disconnects, the CarPlay comes and goes, and a lot of the tech just doesn't recognize. Even the controls on the steering wheel sometimes come and go. Radio stations, the audio system comes and goes, and there have been drivability concerns with some of these that Mercedes is trying to rectify. The sad reality is there's a lot of technology and they're trying to get up to speed in a hurry where Tesla has already been playing this game for a few years. Mercedes is trying, like many other OEM manufacturers, trying to get up to speed and create an electric vehicle for the future. But because there's so much so soon, this all poses a huge risk to reliability. And as a result, if you are one of those people that like to spend their money, get this under a lease, try it out, to, just to say you tried it, you got the postcard and you moved on, that's great. But know this, there is an immense risk for not just this car, but many cars like it in the electric vehicle segment that are largely untested and will pose problems definitely outside of warranty. There's another vehicle that most people would consider luxurious, some don't, but anyway, we're gonna throw it on the list anyway because it is literally one of the most unreliable or problematic vehicles in this particular lineup. And obviously this is a Tesla, but this is the Plaid. So this one carries the thousand horsepower drive. You've got the three motors, you get batteries, and those batteries, although they have a great warranty, eight years and 100,000 miles, the reality is there are problems with a lot of these vehicles. Now, unfortunately, even though Tesla is largely the pioneer of electrified vehicles, they don't necessarily come with some of the problems and we've all heard the stories about glitchy problems here in the headlights and electronics and this fogging over as well as windows fogging over fitment issues panel gaps alignment issues there brake problems premature tire wear or even vehicles not necessarily coming equipped with all the bolts and hardware all tightened allegedly of course and even a lot of times you're finding door handles don't necessarily align and the doors don't align very well Although this one looks actually quite well put together. Look, you've got a gap here that's thinner than this gap. And unfortunately, a lot of times after you open and close that Falcon door sometimes, this actually goes out of alignment. So the reality is lots of electrical problems. Obviously, there's not a lot of mechanical drivetrain here. And that is where the issue is. And once the warranty runs out, now the batteries are covered for a significant amount of time, so you're fairly good there. But there's lots of other moving parts. There's rolling components, there's gears, trains, there's electric motors themselves, which aren't covered necessarily for the extent of the battery warranties. And all it takes is a failure of that screen in the center of the display there, and all is done. You're cooked. I actually had a rental a couple of years ago that I drove it. I opened it, closed it. It was good for a week. I went in one time, the screen never came on. It glitched. I couldn't go anywhere. So those are realities of owning a Tesla. Now they're getting better and they're probably better than most other EV manufacturers in this space, but there are issues. And this one, because of the big Falcon doors that lift up, that is another bone of contention. The suspension systems, quite finicky on these. And while they're lovely to drive, there is lots going on and lots to fail with very few people who know how to fix it properly. And the next one is this little unit right here, dressed in white. We have an Alfa Romeo Stelvio, and we know this is a product of Stellantis or Chrysler per se. And obviously this is Italian, however, partially owned by Dodge, Ram, Stellantis, you know that whole group, which is why it might be a risk outside of warranty. On one hand, on the other hand, if you're a bit of a glutton and you're a bit of a risk taker, it could represent a great value with a vehicle that has all kinds of interesting Italian flair. The analogy I like to compare this is to, do you remember as a kid, you had the old cereal box and every cereal box had a toy in it. Remember, you and your brother would always pour a cereal. Oh, no toy. He'd pour a cereal. Oh, no toy. I'd pour a cereal, no toy. This went on and on until all of a sudden there was a toy. That is basically what this is about. You can drive it day in, day out. It's a very reliable unit for the most part until that one time, until that toy appears and then you're stuck with some big catastrophic electronic issue, creates all kinds of weird shutdowns, dash lights, could often result in all kinds of issues. That means you have to take it to the dealer and spend the Alfa Romeo European flared 
type of service rates. No, you don't necessarily typically pay your Dodge rates. You're going to pay something more associated with Maserati and Alfa Romeo. And that's why it gets very expensive. It's not that these vehicles are grossly unreliable because they're generally not too bad. They're definitely comparable to modern day BMWs and Audis. However, it's just that you're paying an escalated rate for any kind of repairs. And because of the production numbers are lower than many other vehicles from Lexus to BMW to Audi, the lower production numbers means there's less records of what the problems are, less opportunities to learn from those problems. And as well, service shops are fewer and far between. And of course, probably, in my opinion, likely less experienced. Have you ever seen a wide vulva? I mean, look at all the space between the lettering on this thing. Yes, in fact, this is one of the vehicles that I would not recommend keeping outside of warranty. Way too many issues with this. And because a lot of these, this is a T6 all-wheel drive, but a lot of these you can get with a supercharged and a turbocharged four-cylinder engine. Couple that with electrification means there's a whole host of technologically advanced problems just waiting to happen for these vehicles. Well, they've come a long way in terms of their styling, and I truly believe they've actually stepped up their overall cosmetics and style detail better than many of their competitors from BMW, Audi, and Benz. We got some nice chrome detail there and chrome as well. Beautiful alloy wheels here. Of course, look at the two-tone handles. I love the looks of this. Chrome up there, big glass sunroof, lots of great detail. You even get sight lines on the hood. It's absolutely gorgeous here. And the trademark Volvo logos on there. Beautiful LED lights. There's lots to love about these vehicles. They ride nice, they look nice, and they're quiet and serene. But there's a whole list of problems and reason why I would not buy this. Even if I did buy this, I wouldn't have this beyond warranty because there's way too many complex issues with all of that supercharging and turbocharging business that in itself can lead to premature oil consumption, catastrophic engine failure, and a whole list of other big engine problems. So beyond just the oil consumption issue, you can actually anticipate some coolant related problems, quality control related issues related to the electrification, brake faults, as well as tire pressure monitoring issues because it uses a different type of sensor. Water leaks, either whether through there or in the sunroof, whether it's through a doorway or the rear passage here, you can often wind up with some water ingress into the vehicle, as well as fuel pipe leaks, which are known as well could emit fuel vapor, and some real bang up issues with the transmission. We talk about premature transmission failure, that's catastrophic, or even just slipping gears, possibly even just a clicking noise from the front, and as well as even rough gear shifts. So between transmission, engine problems, electrical tech issues, and water leaks, this is no shortage and abundance of real problem areas, and as a result, sure, if you want to lease it, own it for a couple of years maybe, but pitch it before the warranty's gone. And there's the next vehicle I would definitely not own outside of warranty. First of all, it looks like a military boot. Let's get that out of the way. Secondly, there's all sorts of problems. Now, different generations have different issues, but the common issue with the Q5 by Audi like this is this is a TFSI. Yes, carbon fouling, big issue. Of course, brakes are problematic. There's talk about a lot of people having leaks in their sunroofs, as well as leaks coming into the hatch space there. I mean, while these vehicles have all sorts of great technology like this, the fact remains is there's a whole host of challenges. Start-stop issues, heavy oil consumption, specifically as you go back to the 2011 to 2014 model years, but things just don't get a whole lot better. It's that two liter turbo engine that is a heavy oil and gas consumer when you get on it, and it's not a great piece. Leaky fuel pump flanges could emit fuel vapors into the cabin or just become a potential hazard. And many of these engines have had timing chain issues. Timing chains are the synchronization between your valves and your pistons. Get that out of whack and it's all over but the crying and your engine is toast. So unfortunately there's been too many problems. Heavy oil consumption, weak fragile suspension parts, brakes, wheel bearings have been a problem as well. Let's not talk about the intake manifold problems as well as the water pumps that need frequent repairs. These are not necessarily the best that Audi has to offer. They're not that great looking and unfortunately there's way too many problems. Many owners of these vehicles look back every day, feel a little tinge of regret and realize this thing's just not worth it. It looks like that and it's a dud. And with all of that said, check that video out. 2024's most reliable vehicles available. Hope to see each and every one in the next one. We'll see you all real soon. Bye-bye.